Have you ever been in a situation when the needs to be wait for something to be delivered? Or did you have a feeling that someone is outside of your house? Currently, you have CCTV, but the TV which connected to the NVR are displaying your favorite shows. Or is it located on the living room meanwhile you were at your own workroom? Well, by using low cost parts, you may be able to stream it on different places whenever you like. Interested? Let's get started. To begin, you will need Raspberry Pi. In this case, I am using Pi 4, 4 gigabit version. You may use whichever Raspberry Pi version you like. To power it up, you will need USB-C power supply. To display the videos from the stream, you will need LCD with HDMI output. For Raspberry Pi, it uses micro HDMI output to store the operating system micro SD card are needed. For this project, I am using 64 gigabit. Well, that's all for the hardware part. To start with the software side, you will need to download the operating system for the Raspberry Pi. Head over to the software tab and click the Raspberry Pi operating system link. From there, you will notice there are three selection of the operating system. As from top to bottom, there are different in size due to different of the functionality and features included. For this project, I am gonna use with Raspberry Pi operating system with desktop. By using the Raspberry Pi imager, I will able to download the Raspberry Pi image to my micro SD. This will make it bootable and preventing the needs to tricking around. It will take some time depending on your micro SD write and read speed time. Once completed, take out micro SD from the card reader and put it into Raspberry Pi. It will be advisable if you have casing or hexagon spacer to provide some space for the Raspberry Pi from the table surface. This will enhance circulation. In my case, I had a 3D design and printed a case for the LCD module. Unfortunately, inaccurate drawing causes some holes and size mismatch. Forgive me for my mistake. Since I don't have enough time to correct it back and reprint, I will leave it as is for this moment. Plug in USB keyboard and mouse for setting SSH and check the current IP. These are for enabling remote the Raspberry Pi in future. Once this completed, no need to plug it anymore. Ensure you are connected to the network via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. To check the IP address, you may use the terminal to check it. Type in sudo if config and take a look at WLAN 0 for Wi-Fi interface IP address. Type in SSH, followed by IP address of the Raspberry and dash L. The software we are going to be installed are from Swen VD. RPI surveillance. Execute the first command as shown. Once complete, execute second command which CD RPI serve. To install, execute third command, which is sudo dot slash install dot sh. It may take a while depending on your internet connection speed. So step back and drink some coffee. Once completed, we have to update Raspberry repository. 
do it by execute the update command as shown. If your coffee already run out by this moment, it's time to get a new one or you can do other things for now. Now it's time for to do configuration. Type in sudo nano slash etc slash rpi serve dot conf. Delete all unnecessary lines and only keep the essential for now. Be reminded that single mistake on this configuration may cause this software unable to run. You may refer to the example configuration later on the GitHub page. Remember to change auto stretch setting to true. Keep delete and delete until same as shown on the screen. The important things to do are RTSP stream link for the camera that you are using. Do check on Google to find the suitable RTSP command for it. Currently, I am using Heat Vision IP camera. Different camera brand does use different RTSP protocol. Do a quick check on user manual or google it to be sure. For this project, I am using Hik Vision camera. The same goes for Ubiquiti cameras. You should find the documentation for it via Ubiquiti manual or a website. And the last one are for Dahua camera. Now, I think you got the fundamental how to search for the RTSP protocol for the camera. Let's continue. To test RTSP command or connection, you may use VLC player. By utilizing network string function, input the RTSP command into the VLC. The test video should display successfully. In some condition, username and password are required. Great! Our stream able to view successfully. Input it into our configuration files. For this project, I have set 4 camera stream link. For the resolution, I will use the default to 1920 for with hit Ctrl O to save and Ctrl X to exit the configuration screen. We need to restart the software in order to run the new configuration. Execute sudo system control stop rpi serve. The display should stop any activity now. Execute again sudo system control start rpi serve. That should bring back the display follow the new configuration setting. It may take a while depend on how fast Raspberry Pi able to connect to the network and stream the video. Let's see how it works when suddenly power are removed. It should take a little bit of time to boot up and connect it to network. It should resume work back as normal without any keyboard needed. Thus, it's a great choice to be used as a monitoring device anywhere in the house. Now, I am going to show how to monitor the performance of the Raspberry Pi when running this surveillance software. Use sudo htop. These are crucial to decide how much memory you are need to run this. I am using 4 gigabit to stream 4 cameras. You should try experiment with more cameras 
to understand the consumption of the memory and overall performance. More stream means more hardware consumption. Well, I hope you are able to make one based on your needs. I am sure that these are helpful enough for you to make one. I will try to improve my future videos with full walkthrough and guidance. Don't be anxious anymore thinking there are people at front or at the back of the house while you are relaxed working or cooking. Just use the system to do it for you anywhere in the house. Subscribe and like, it will help me to grow this channel. Thanks also to Sven Vidi for make this great software. Do visit his GitHub page. Have a great day and do it now!